This planet is full of animals that can live a lot longer than we can, but most of us are already aware of these creatures. Some tortoises, sharks and whales can live for centuries, and some ocean organisms can live for thousands or in some cases tens of thousands of years. These animals deserve to be appreciated for their ability to live this long, but in today's video I will be focusing on animals that mostly go under the radar. There are a large number of animals that can live for over a hundred years, but very few people know that they are capable of this. In today's video I will be going through some of the best examples and for our first animal we can head over to Southeast Asia and Australia. The sulphur crested cockatoo is a bird that's known for having a big personality, and it prefers to live in wooded habitats in Australia and New Guinea. These large parrots are named after their vibrant yellow crests, and they are among the most iconic birds in Australia. Unfortunately, not everyone is a fan of these birds as they are considered a pest in many areas across their range. They are known for being extremely intelligent and they will take advantage of unattended food and belongings. If you've visited Australia and stayed in areas where they are common then you may be aware of the cockatoo warning signs. This is because they will happily enter unattended hotel rooms and they will eat all the food that they can find. When they aren't stealing food they are incredibly curious and endearing and they adapt very well to urban areas. They learn a lot from watching other members of their species and humans as they've learned to open garbage bins by imitating other animals and in captivity some cockatoos will spontaneously dance to music. There are four recognised subspecies of the sulphur crested cockatoo but they are all very similar in size, shape and behaviour. Even though they are native to Australia and New Guinea, they have been introduced into a few areas outside of their native range, including Western Australia, Hawaii and parts of New Zealand. In the wild, these birds feed on the ground and this makes them very vulnerable to predators. Thankfully, they do have a strategy to avoid predation, as they usually feed in groups and one individual will usually perch on a tree looking for predators. When a predator is spotted they will let out a very loud alarm call and this alarm call travels very far. This behaviour has become so well known that it's even become a part of Australian slang. When somebody is keeping a lookout for police raids while doing something illegal they are known as a cockatoo or a cocky. If the sulphur crested cockatoo does manage to avoid predators and angry farmers they can live for a very long time indeed. The oldest ever sulphur crested cockatoo lived to the grand old age of 120 years old and it experienced a lot throughout its lifetime. This cockatoo was named Cocky Bennett and he travelled the world with multiple owners from 1796 to 1916. In the wild they only live to around 20 to 40 years old, but in captivity they can easily outlast humans. For our next animal we can stay in Australia as we will be taking a look at the saltwater crocodile. Saltwater crocodiles are mostly found in the brackish waters of northern Australia and southeast Asia and in these waters they are apex predators. They will feed on pretty much anything they come across and this can be anything from large predators to land mammals and sometimes humans. This crocodilian is the largest living reptile reaching weights of over one and a half tons, but surprisingly they aren't the deadliest crocodile in the world. The Nile crocodile is known to kill more humans than any other crocodile and they have a higher fatality rate than the saltwater crocodile when attacking humans. Because of the large size of their meals and their mostly sluggish lifestyle, the saltwater crocodile can go for extremely long periods without feeding. Not all of this crocodile's meals are substantial and they will alter the way they dispatch their prey based on their size. Some smaller prey animals are swallowed whole but larger animals are often drowned. Even though most people across their range are not fond of them due to the danger of being attacked by them, they do play a very important role in their ecosystem. This is especially the case in Australia because unlike the freshwater crocodile, the saltwater crocodile can consume large amounts of cane toads without succumbing to their toxins. This can help to slightly stop the spread of these invasive amphibians but unfortunately it doesn't have a significant effect on their numbers. Most saltwater crocodile attacks on humans go unreported as they usually happen in very rural areas of Southeast Asia, but there have been a few in Australia over the years. 
There have been at least two fatal attacks here since the year 2020, but this is still a relatively small number compared to how many saltwater crocodiles are in Australia. The low level of attacks is mainly due to public awareness and extensive efforts by wildlife officials in Australia to post crocodile warning signs at numerous areas. Because the saltwater crocodile uses very little energy in its day-to-day -day life and because they can go without food for over a year, they can live for a surprisingly long amount of time. These animals do live a lot longer in captivity but verified ages are very hard to come by. Despite this, it's believed that saltwater crocodiles can reach the grand old age of 120 and other large crocodilians can reach a similar age. A saltwater crocodile of this age would be extremely large, and I think it's safe to say that you wouldn't want to bump into one in the wild. New Zealand is known for its beautiful endemic birds, but these aren't the only iconic animals that can be found here. If you're lucky when exploring some of the offshore islands or inland sanctuaries, you'll be able to find the Tuatara. Even though this animal may look like, behave like, and reach the same size as many lizards around the world, the Tuatara is not a lizard and is part of a distinct lineage. It's the only remaining species in its order and the majority of its relatives thrived in the Mesozoic era. The Tuatara is the largest reptile in New Zealand reaching a maximum length of around 80 centimetres and weighing in at up to a kilogram. These reptiles live in close proximity to seabirds and the birds directly benefit the Tuatara. Once the burrowing seabirds leave their nests, the Tuatara will move in and use their burrows. The seabirds' guano also helps to maintain the invertebrate population and these animals make up the majority of their diet. They are extremely important animals when it comes to Maori culture as they are regarded as the messenger of the god of death and disaster and Maori women are forbidden to eat them. Tuatara also indicate the borders of what is sacred and restricted and it's believed that there could be serious consequences if that boundary is crossed. Just like with many other native species across New Zealand, they have been negatively affected by invasive species with rats being the main problem. This is why most of the Tuatara populations are found on the remote offshore islands, as these islands are usually mammal free. Thanks to the eradication of rats in certain areas and reintroductions, they have started to make a comeback, and hopefully we will have more of these unique reptiles in the future. Tuataras have one of the slowest growth rates of any reptile, and they continue to grow until they are around 35 years old. In the wild, they can live to around 60 years old, but in captivity, they can live to over 100. Once again, it's hard to determine the exact age of most individuals, but some experts believe that they can live to over 200 years old. One Tuatara named Henry successfully mated at the age of 110 years old, and his partner Mildred was 80 years old. It's slightly suspect of Henry to go after someone 30 years younger than him, but I can look past this as he's helping his species out. Sea urchins aren't the most popular animals in the ocean because they're not the most pleasant animals to step on, and they feed on kelp which is essential for many animals to survive. This is why animals such as sea otters are so important because without them sea urchin numbers would soon be out of control, and the kelp forests would eventually disappear. Today there are around 950 sea urchin species, but in today's video I will be focusing on one species in particular. The red sea urchin can be found in the northeastern Pacific Ocean and it ranges from Alaska to Baja, California. They are mostly found in shallow waters and they are one of the species that are known to ravish kelp forests. Throughout a red sea urchin's lifetime they can get through a lot of kelp as it's believed that they can live for up to 200 years. The oldest specimens were found around Vancouver Island and they must have been very lucky to avoid sea otters for this long. It would be easy to see these animals in the wild and not even give them a second glance, but they could have started their lives generations before you were born. Some red sea urchins could have started their lives in the same year that the first Anglo-Burmese war started, the same year that the Florida state capital was moved from St. Augustine to Tallahassee, and in the same year that the United States War Department created the Bureau for Indian Affairs. <laughs> It's hard to imagine all the things that could have happened in one of these creatures' lifetimes, and even though they can be destructive, they are extremely interesting animals. 
The Greenland shark is arguably the spookiest fish in the ocean and its undead appearance has garnered it the nickname of zombie shark. They are found in the North Atlantic and Arctic Oceans, and they are among the largest sharks in the world. The largest confirmed Greenland shark measured in at 6.4 meters and weighed over a ton, but some experts believe that they can get even larger. Most of this predator's life is a mystery, but they are believed to be apex predators feeding on fish, squid, and surprisingly seals. They are very slow moving animals and it's believed that they target seals that are sleeping in the water. This only adds to their nightmarish reputation and I think it's fair to say that you should watch your back around these sharks. Like many other sleeper sharks they are known to scavenge on the ocean floor and they aren't very picky when it comes to what carcasses they feed on. Moose, polar bear and reindeer carcasses have been found in their stomachs but thankfully there has never been a verified Greenland shark attack on a human. There was one reported case in Canada in 1859 where a Greenland shark was found with a human leg in its stomach. Based on what we know about the Greenland shark, it's likely that it scavenged the leg, and there haven't been any cases such as this since. In certain areas across its range, it's hunted by humans, and this is despite the fact that its flesh is toxic to mammals. Its meat contains high levels of TMAO which can cause your body serious harm, but when it's fermented, dried or repeatedly boiled, eventually it becomes safe to eat. Because the Greenland shark lives in very cold waters, it makes sense that everything in their lives happens very slowly. They have the lowest swim speed and tail beat frequency for their size across all fish species, and this is due to their slow metabolism and extreme longevity. These sharks are born alive and they have an estimated gestation period of 8 to 18 years. It's believed that they only reach sexual maturity at around 150 years old, and this is enough time for two humans to come and go. Female Greenland sharks give birth to around 10 pups at a time, but due to their longevity, it's believed that they can give birth to 200 to 700 pups during their lifetime. They have the longest known lifespan of all vertebrate species with an estimated maximum age of around 250 to 500 years. It's impossible to comprehend just how much the world has changed during a giant Greenland shark's lifetime and even though they are spooky they are magnificent creatures. Some animals are not affected by aging in the same way as most other animals, with one of the best examples being the immortal jellyfish. The immortal jellyfish is a small jellyfish species that can be found in temperate and tropical oceans worldwide, and it's known for being biologically immortal. When these creatures are exposed to environmental stress, physical assault, or they become sick or old, they can revert to the polyp stage forming a new polyp colony. It does this through the cell development process of transdifferentiation, which alters the differentiated state of cells and transforms them into new types of cells. It's possible for the jellyfish to do this indefinitely, but this is unlikely as they will eventually be picked off by predators or disease. It seems that even for the immortal jellyfish it's impossible to live forever, but they can outlive any other animal under the right conditions. There are some other honourable mentions such as orcas that can live to a maximum age of 100 years old, and due to the fact that they have no natural predators and they live in groups, they can commonly reach the age of 80 years old. Because breathing for orcas is not automatic, many old dying orcas eventually take their last breath at the surface before eventually sinking down into the depths. This seems like quite a peaceful and poetic way to go, and their nutrients are eventually returned to the sea. Of course there are many other animals that could have made it into this video so if you think you know of any then let me know down in the comments below. But until next time, goodbye.